Hey guys, this video is an update to my previous app comparison almost one year ago. Uh, since then, a lot of things have changed on the iPad for some of these drawing apps and my preferences have changed as well. So I'll talk only about the apps I really use for my work, professional and personal, and not the ones I've just used to test them and stop using after. So let's not waste any time and start with my top 3 most used apps, which are Art Studio Pro, Procreate and Clip Studio. For each of them, I'll talk about its strong points mainly, what it does better than the rest and not just basic features which are shared by all apps. And of course, this list is subjective, it's my preference list based on what I use them for, and absolutely not an objective ranking of what is the best one for everybody. You have to make your own choices based on your use case. So now let's go. Since RStudio updated to version 3.0, it became my favorite and most used, no contest, and here's why. So first, adjustment layers. I use uh, adjustment layers on basically everything besides when I'm just sketching. Being able to go back and adjust certain colors or effects as I change my mind during the painting is part of my workflow. I use the gradient maps more than anything, from just creating an atmosphere to a black and white sketch to applying delicate color shifts on specific part of the image, or just even coloring a whole black and white image. Adjustment layers are a must for their editability and I can't use Procreate's destructive adjustment when doing any serious work. Number 2, the brush engine. It has been revamped in the latest 3.0 version and it's now better than ever. In my opinion, better also than any other app, save maybe from Fresco, which has unique features. Um, the default brushes are superb, versatile and there's so many of them. You can replicate traditional media very well, while also capitalizing on what makes digital painting unique, with features such as smooth averaging, blending, and a lot more. You can also import Photoshop ABR brushes, which work decently well out of the box, but I'm in the middle of creating and finessing my own pack of brushes for this app. Number 3, the overall compromise. An app can range from the ultra streamlined Procreate where a lot of features are cut in order to simplify the process and keep the fluidity of the app, or on the contrary it can be almost a full desktop port like Clip Studio or Affinity Photo where every possible function you could need is available, but this comes at a cost of a crowded interface and a steep learning curve. To me Art Studio Pro is the perfect balance. It has all the core features I need while staying really fluid, having nice gesture shortcuts, decent auto-saving, and most of all, the drawing experience is the one I enjoy the most out of all apps. On second place, I put Clip Studio, even though right now I use it less than Procreate in the third place, this is simply because I'm not drawing for my new webcomic at the moment, and I use Clip Studio exclusively for that. But when I'll start to draw again my story, I'll use Clip Studio again, and here's why. Uh, number one, it has the best comic drawing features. This app is tailored to comic creation, and it has all the specific tools to make your life easier for this. You have an easy c panel c creator and divider, where resizing panels is easier than anywhere. It creates automatically a mask on everything outside the panel to hide it cleanly. You have the same intelligent tools for speech bubbles, where you can drop them in vectors, resize and edit them however you want. And when you type uh, text inside it, it will automatically link the two layers. So after you just move the bubble and the text will stay inside, you resize the bubble and the text follows but of course you can still edit the text. And the list goes on. You have a sh huge library of uh, tileable patterns, speed lines, and all the tools are intelligent and editable later on. 
The bottom line is, if you need a tool for a dedicated task in comic or manga creation, Clip Studio probably, probably has it. If not, it probably doesn't exist anywhere else either. Number 2, the iPad app is a full desktop port. The interface barely changes, and even though it can sometimes be frustrating if you don't have a keyboard to use the shortcuts, the fact that you can transfer your file from the iPad and continue working on the desktop seamlessly is incredible. I usually start all my files on the iPad and do all the drawing and rendering on it, and then transfer them over to PC to type the text more comfortably with a big keyboard. Um, number 3, the animation tools. I won't go into much detail because I'm not yet good enough at animation, but the tools offered on this software are pro level and are used by some studios. Like the rest of the app, it takes time to learn them, but you have everything you could need. Number 4, the book editing module. In the EX version of the software, which is more expensive, you have an editing module to manage different pages and create your uh, PDF directly in the software. If you want to print a book, for example, and you don't want to rely on Adobe InDesign, you can do everything in Clip Studio and easily switch between your pages in the book review, and then go into the edit view on a specific page. fluid and responsive. As such, it takes the niche of being more like a sketchbook where I can easily scribble anything and base, and there is basically no friction between me wanting to draw and starting to draw. So number one, the invisible autosave feature. In Procreate, the autosave function is basically invisible. You never see a saving progress bar and somehow your work is always saved. This is the one feature I love the most for the peace of mind it gives me. Number 2, the speed and fluidity of the app. Every step from opening the app to creating a new canvas and drawing, and even going back to the gallery, there is never a black screen. Everything feels smooth and organic, and you never have to wait. While the other apps have more capabilities, this comes at a cost of speed. Procreate made the choice to restrict the user to always keep the user experience as perfect as possible. In this manner, it's different from the other apps and offers something unique. The, the most analog experience I had on a di digital device. And this is something I value. Number 3, the community behind the app. Procreate has by far the most marketing, I think, out of all the art apps on iPad, and it gained a, a huge support. What is nice is that you can easily find new brushes for the app, new assets, and tons of people creating their own stuff for the community, unlike more other obscure apps. On their website, you have a dedicated marketplace, forum, and etc. And Procreate is a new category on many marketplaces such as Creative Market, for example. Even I created my own pack of perfect ink brushes, um, link in the description down below. This is my shameless plug. And number four, the layer export function. This allows me to use Procreate as a note-taking app by considering each layer as a page and then export the project as a PDF file with all the layers being separate pages. This is awesome and it expands the use of Procreate outside it just being a pure drawing app. Based mode also with really nice drawing brushes. I use this app a lot more for graphic design work and not illustration, but sometimes when I fancy some vector drawing, this is where I head. For its unique blend of nice pixel-based drawing and also vector functions rivaling Adobe Illustrator, this app fits a unique niche. And that's it for all the apps I use all the time, and also I'm still using them now. All other apps I tested for illustration purposes I've now stopped using, mostly because for my use case they don't compare to the top 3 and serve no particular purpose. My top pick is RStudio for just about everything day to day, when I have something in mind to draw and I know the app won't limit me in the creative process. Next to this, I use Procreate as a do-it-all digital sketchbook. I sometimes even use it for note-taking when I want to doodle on the side with the ability to export each layer as pages in a PDF file. It really acts as a quick access notebook.
And finally, we have Clip Studio that will always be my choice when I draw for my comics, but I don't use it outside of this case because the app is really intensive and, and requires more time to just open a document, save, export, navigate through the menus and so on. So there you go, these are my picks at the start of 2021. I hope this was helpful for you and let's see what updates we'll bring this year. Bye everyone, have a nice day and keep creating.